Hey guys, welcome back to Roots and Refuge. I've got another farm chores video for you today, and we're going to be doing a couple of things different. Um, today, the sheep are actually okay. They've still got plenty of grass, but I do have to move both of the chicken coops, so we'll do that. I'm actually going to do that first, which is a little bit backwards to what I normally do, but with it getting hotter in the day and the chickens are, are cooped up right now, so that way I can move the coops, I wanted to go ahead and tackle this uh, before milking. Um, and how I'm accomplishing that is that I just went out later in the in the evening and and put the cows or separated the cows and the calves um, a little bit later. That way I can stay on my uh, every 12 hour um, separation. So like, you know, you can adjust the time that you're milking. You don't want to do it too much and you don't want to do it too far apart. But you can adjust it a little bit as long as if the space between putting the calves up and milking the cows is around 12 hours. Um, at least that's what's worked for us. We've had a lot of success with it. Um, so if like I put them uh, up before I separate the calves at 8 o'clock the night before, then I try and get out there and milk at 8 o'clock the next morning. So last night I just did it a little bit later, more like 9, 30, 10. Um, so I could get a later milking in that would give me the time this morning to go ahead and move the chicken coops. So we're going to move two coops. Um, then we're going to go milk, and that's going to be a little bit different. Um, while Jessica was out of town uh, moving Malia back from Vegas, uh, there was a miscommunication once between me and Will on whether or not he was coming in that morning. And I actually had an appointment and found out last minute that actually Will wasn't coming, so I had to milk both cows and all three goats and I had about 50 minutes to do it um, so I figured out a way to get them all five milk at the same time and got it done in 45 minutes so someone had said that me and they would have loved to have seen that so even though I don't have an appointment this morning and I don't have to do it um, I'm actually going to try and recreate that and see if I can get it done in 45 minutes again so we're gonna set the camera up and I'm going to milk the goats and the cows at the same time and I want to see how that goes. Uh, other than that, we just got normal farm stuff. Got to go feed the pigs, uh, check on everything else, make sure everyone's got water, and that's going to wrap it up. So let's get started on moving the coops. Okay, I've got the first coop moved and this net set up. Now I haven't got it with all the tension and the energizer, um, but a lot of times what I'll do when it's this hot is I will get the coop moved, get the nets kind of set up, not tight and not energized, but I'll go ahead and let them out of the coop just so they can go ahead and get out um, before it gets too hot. Um, so I'm gonna let them out. Then I've got to uh, set up the other net for the chickshaw. Um, I actually moved them over here by these trees. Um, again, with the heat, I've noticed that they've all been crowding up underneath the coops and uh, this, these trees will actually help provide a more shaded area. I'll probably be able to keep them here for at least a week, maybe two weeks, just kind of depends on how much rain we get. Um, I've got a couple other trees I'll probably bounce them to, but I'll try and bounce them in between the trees while it's this hot, just like, again, to give them extra shade. So at this point, once I've got the net set up and the coops moved, 
I'll use the side-by-side -side and I'll drive around and pick up the energizers, the grounding rods, the T-post, and the tie-offs for the corners, and then the waters and feeders all in the back of the side-by-side. -side. And then I'll drive them back over here and finish setting everything up. Okay guys, now that we've got the fences set up, I've still got to move the feeders and I've got to drag a water line from the garden over here to fill up the waters. But uh, while I've got it on my mind because I've just moved it and I know people have been asking, I'm gonna kind of go over some of the equipment we use in our poultry setup. Uh, so we kind of use a mixture of two brands. The two brands that I use is Premier One and Gallagher, Gallagher Electric Fencing. So this fence right here, that I've got the Chickshaw set up in is a Premier One fence. It's a uh, 48 inch tall poultry netting. Um, the reason I like this one a lot is that, especially when it gets dry like today, uh, this setup has a single spike that goes into the ground. It's not the dual prong spikes you see a lot of. Uh, this is good because when it's dry, it is easier to drive these in. You can actually use a hammer. Uh, I usually use like a rubber mallet. Uh, sometimes a, if I need to, I can use like a two pound sledge. Obviously you wanna make sure that the pole's lined up. You don't wanna have it bending and try and hit it. That's not gonna work. As far as the conductivity of the netting, I haven't found a difference in either brand. Uh, they both have functioned for years uh, in keeping stuff in and keeping stuff out. But I will say that this particular set of netting from Premier One is great for dry climates or when it gets dry on your property. Uh, as far as energizers, I've got this S100 set up for this Premier One netting. This is a Gallagher energizer. The S100 is kind of the workhorse of our property. I use it on more, pro it's on the pigs, it's on the poultry netting, it's on the sheep. I've got a few of them and it's what I have always used. Now, they've recently come out with a smaller one that they told me with new technology would do the job the same as the S100, only it's a little bit cheaper price point and it's smaller. And that is this energizer right here I'm about to show you. So this is the S30. Um, the S30 is also a Gallagher energizer and it has actually run the poultry netting to the same quality standards as the S100. It's a little bit cheaper. Um, I've been working with Gallagher to try and get to a, a, a homesteader's kit put together. Um, honestly, from a brand perspective, they are a little bit more difficult to work with, but they have really high quality products. So um, I'm kind of, we'll see if that happens. I hope it does. If it did, it would, the S30 would be the energizer that we would run with that. 
So I, I actually do recommend the S30. It has performed higher than I anticipated it would. Now this netting right here that's got our fancy coop in, this is the Gallagher poultry netting. It's a good net. Um, I haven't had any issues with it. It's what I primarily used when we moved here. Um, one of the hangups on it is when it gets dry like it is now, it's got the two pronged feet and they're hard to drive in and they're also hard to pull out. And then when it gets dry, it has a tendency to bend the feet and send them in different directions, which causes major problems going forward because once the feet start bending, they just keep bending. But the Premier One Fence with the same kind of foot on it does the exact same thing. So it's not really a brand issue. It's just a design thing. Now these work great in wetter climates when the ground is soft. Um, so, you know, I kind of try and use both. I don't have enough of that netting to use to switch out both coops right now to just use it. I probably will at some point, you know, switch the netting once it gets into the dry season, go with the single spike. And then once it's back to wet, I'll switch to these dual prong feet. Oh yeah, one more thing I wanted to show you that's kind of uh, integral in our setup is these grounding rods. Let's see. Okay, so this is a T-handle grounding rod. That is a Gallagher product also. Um, it's what I use basically on any mobile uh, electric netting system, sheep, poultry. Uh, the big energizer we use for the main pasture has big grounding rods that are buried completely. I like these. They have a T-handle. They're easy to pull out. You can get a lot more ground in them. A lot of people who run into uh, electrical netting problems or stuff's getting in or stuff's getting out that they don't want, I would say probably 9 times out of 10, it is a grounding issue. It's not a net or a energizer issue. You can only energize a fence equivalent to the amount of grounding it has so you know if you've got like a little short grounding stake and it just goes on the ground and it's not popping hard enough to keep your pig in or keep stuff from getting into your chickens you know you need to change your grounding rod first that's the first thing i would do i drive those about halfway down so it's about 12 inches down um, you could drive them deeper to get more juice but i haven't found that that's been necessary so like i said i drive that down about 12 inches it's easy to pull out you can drive it with the back end of a T-post driver or bring that sledge and drive it down with that. Um, being that it's made out of a more conductive material, it does have a tendency to bend eventually. Once it starts bending, it gets really hard to use. But they're not super expensive. I've got like two or three on reserve that are brand new. Whenever one starts to get kind of wore out and bent, uh, I will end up just uh, salvaging it into a scrap pile and pulling out a new one. Um, I don't really know what to do about that. Like. I guess the trade-off is, is if you do it out of material that's not going to bend, it's less conductive, and so kind of you know missing the point. But those are the best grounding rods, and if you're having issues with your netting, I would definitely try upgrading that first and kind of see where it goes. Even if you're using a Premier One Energizer, I would try hooking up a grounding rod like that to your system. All right, one more thing before we uh, head over to milk the cows and the goats is the reason I, one of the main things about this Energizer and Gallagher's product of Energizers that I like is this system right here that lets them sit up off the ground and onto a T-post. Every Energizer they have that's solar powered has that feature. And so uh, it keeps it up off the ground, keeps it easier to access. You don't have to get down on the ground. It doesn't get rained on, mud, grass. Um, I've, I've see, I feel like my stuff lasts longer. Um, I did have other brands energizers that sat on the ground and they didn't last long enough got wore out got hit by stuff just didn't seem to work so this that, that's probably one of the main reasons i've stuck with the gallagher energizers is that design and the fact that like i said i've used them for i don't know five years now and haven't had any real problems with them so all right let's go get the cows and the sheep milked it has gotten hot early today we got a much earlier start than we did last time and it's still just hot and I'm sweaty and I want to get this finished because it's not so much the heat, it's just the humidity will just take it out of you. Just takes it out of you. All right, let's get going. Okay, we got all the chickens moved, everyone's set up and now it's time to milk and everybody is very much ready for that. Goats are ready. Cows are ready. Mm -hmm.
let's see if I can do this again and how fast or how long it takes me. All right, so this is the goat's milk. It's already strained um, because I was straining it as each, I was finishing each goat um, because I don't have a big enough basin to dump it all into and it just seems more efficient to just pour it out and then I rinse out the container and take it back out for the next goat. So we got one gallon of goat's milk. Um, I'll scrape the sticker off and put the date on that. And I'm currently straining and about to pour the cow's milk.
Okay, that is finished. Final time was 56 minutes in a few seconds, which is actually slower than I was last time. However, uh, Virgie ate extremely slow, which she did not do last time, and she had a lot more milk um, than she did last time, so it took me longer to milk it out. And a couple other things that happened was this my own fault. Uh, I forgot to grab a couple of things like the um, pail that I was milking the goats into, I left it in the milk room, had to go back and get it. And you know, these kind of small things have a tendency to add up. And But hey, uh, 50, what did I say, 56 minutes? That's not bad for milking two cows fully out, three goats, processing all the milk. Um, the only thing I didn't do included in that was, I'm gonna spray off the milk stanchion, but I did not include that in this go around because last time I just left it dirty and came out and cleaned it after my appointment because I knew I was running short on time. So I'd left that off this time. Well guys, that's gonna be a wrap for today's farm tour video. I hope that it was enjoyable watching me race against my record setting milking time. Um, didn't quite get there this time, but maybe I'll try it again in a little bit after I got a little bit more practice in, maybe shave off a few minutes in you know, get it in 42 minutes, you know, I don't know. We'll see. That is a lot of, of bouncing back and forth and a lot of work, but I actually did have caught a, a lot of fun trying to beat my time. Um, I hope that the uh, moving the chicken coops and the information that I provided for like our operation, what equipment we're using uh, was helpful. And again, thank you for hanging out with us today. We bless you until next time.